to address the issues facing Tennesseans today. From 10 News, this is Inside Tennessee. Good morning and welcome to Inside Tennessee. I'm your moderator, John Becker. Why am I standing in front of this map? Well, it's one of the most important maps that we have discussed in a decade in Knox County. Let me just set the map for you so you understand where our discussion is going and then we'll bring in our guests. We are talking about redistricting, which might make you fall asleep on a normal day, but this is key because it determines who represents you on county commission and school board. These are the people who make decisions about our roads, our sheriff's department, our schools. It is critical to what we look like moving forward. And the idea is that we have equal representation no matter what zip code you live in in Knox County. So for example, on this map, you see this is District 2, Knox County Commission District 2. Courtney Durrett represents that district. District 1, Daisha Lundy. We're going to talk about why some of these areas are shaded in this map with our guests. We welcome this morning Commissioner Kyle Ward of the 4th District. He is in charge of the redistricting committee. Daisha Lundy also joins us again. She's from District 1 where we're going to see some changes. That is a majority minority represented district. And of course our panel, Don Bosch, who is a Democrat and re represents that side of the aisle, also runs his own law firm, and Susan Richardson-Williams, a Republican. She runs her own PR firm. Good to have all of you with us. And Commissioner Ward, I'm gonna start with you. I've set the table here. This is a map that you submitted uh, to the committee and was voted and passed by the redistricting committee and will now go before county commission a couple of times. The public will have a chance to weigh in, but what should people take note of on this map and what were you trying to do when you drew it? Sure, let me uh, kind of set the foundation a little bit. Every 10 years we do redistricting. When we do redistricting, we need to have a 10% deviation. That means five up or five below what this year's number is 53,000. So basically you're looking from 50,000 to 56,000 people per district. We had a huge amount of growth out in West Knoxville um, and so districts like uh, Commissioner Hill, uh, which is Hardin Valley and Carnes, needs to lose about 10,000 citizens and be shifted into other districts. Commissioner Schoonmaker in Farragut has about 6,000, I believe, over the number. He also needs to be shifted down. But then you have districts like um, out east and, and south Knoxville, both those needed to gain people. Same with the first, they needed to gain people. So we have to shift people into those districts. So we have a lot of pieces to move around the board to kind of create the map that you see in front of you. To complicate this further, because of COVID, we got the numbers uh, late August, early September. Usually the numbers would come in, the data from the federal government would come in in April, and we'd be able to break down precincts where people vote um, from what are now somewhere above 10,000, 12,000, 14,000 people. They should be around 6,000 people at most. So instead of moving smaller blocks, we've had to move a lot of more bigger blocks this year, which will displace, unfortunately, more people. Hey, so what you see Warren, now in front of you, oh, go sorry, ahead. go for it. Go ahead. No, no. So for this map right here, um, basically I was in, I had COVID and I was out for three weeks and the week I was coming back to, um, to the redistricting committee, uh, we got a letter from the NAACP about they wanted to make sure and also people representing, you know, people, well, leaders in the first district saying that they want to make sure that the first district has that minority majority and keeps that going forward. At that point in time, we only had <laughs> six maps. None of those six maps actually had a minority majority um, first district. And so I came a little bit late to the game, but I came and brought a map that has, that still keeps the first district minority majority. That's probably what a lot of people heard in the, in the headlines. And then we voted on that, that passed nine to two and now we go to commission where it couldn't be adjusted again, um, but we have to have two votes in a public hearing um, before it gets passed, uh, finalized. And let me just summarize before we move to you, Commissioner Lundy, a little bit of what you just said, Commissioner Ward, because I wanna point out the areas you're talking about. Again, this is where we're seeing a lot of growth in the county right there. You see that area shaded. That's one of the proposed changes. That is true as well for this part of Northeast Knox County. And this is Commissioner uh, Daisha Lundy's district, and you see lots of shading here. And that's, that's been a key focus, as Commissioner Ward said, of the headlines, keeping this district in particular uh, majority minority. So Commissioner Lundy, 
Let's talk to you for a moment about that and the fact that if this map were to go forward as it is, you would see some neighborhoods lost in your district, and that's also a little bit tough to swallow. Oh, yes, it has definitely been a frustrating pro uh, process to those who have been following the process. Uh, I have been advocating since the beginning to maintain my majority minority, but I uh, said I was not naive to the fact that my district is very is changing uh, rapidly with different developments going on and more non-minorities non moving in. Um, so um, Commissioner Ward did come up with a map that uh, kept the major uh, the minority majority uh the only thing that you know just i hate and that's just me just being very passionate of uh, taking some uh, neighborhoods especially from commissioner durrett's district uh will have to end up in district one so that's that's the that's the frustration for me and i just wanted to underline the population numbers because that's key to this where commissioner ward mm -hmm. you heard him talking about the deviation you essentially want all nine districts to have roughly equal the number of people that one commissioner represents. That number happens to be about 53,000. Um, we're going to take a quick break and bring our panelists in because they've been taking notes and have some specific questions for you, but just wanted to lay the groundwork for the discussion ahead. We're back with the commissioners and the panel right after this.